to my channel. Today I have a makeup tutorial for you all. Oh, I loved doing this tutorial. I was a guest on The Staying In, which is a pub, well a virtual pub, ran by the lovely Amy Cavanaugh uh, for people who are lonely during lockdown or just want a bit of a a thing to do on a Saturday night. I think she runs different nights and has different speakers and I was one of them but I was talking about makeup and I thought I'd post it to my channel because I haven't done a makeup tutorial in months, years even. So I'm really excited to bring you this because it's just a no makeup makeup look. This is aimed at people who want to know the basics of makeup. Uh, I kept it really, really plain and glowy and glam. Um, so let's get on with it. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, do you want <laughs> to um, tell people a bit about who you are? Yeah. You yes. So hello, I am Lucy Edwards. I'm 24 and I first started out just doing YouTube. Um, my video Blind Girl Does Her Own Makeup went viral um, and that's how sort of my channel um, came to be really. Um, I just, I lost my eyesight at age 17 to a rare genetic condition called incontinence pigmentation. Really long-winded way of basically saying I lost almost complete and total vision at age 17. So um, yeah, I started uploading my experiences. I do makeup as a hobby in my full-time slash freelancer life i am a journalist for the bbc uh, and i was the first one presenter on radio one and i just love telling stories and uh being an advocate and also yeah do makeup so that's me so yeah so kind of what made you get like into makeup and do you think it changed like your perspective when you lost your sight yeah, so I first started getting into makeup purely because uh, my sister had just totally loved it. And I always did it when I was sighted from like a sighted perspective. And because my um, operation at age 17 sort of rendered me quite very blind very quickly, because um, the surgeon did quite a lot of, it, of uh, crazy things to my eyes, um, that basically meant that I was adjusting to it really, really quickly. And... I think I really was having a lot of grief towards the mirror and not having a mirror anymore. Um, as a young teenage girl, you know, hearing my peers like do all this makeup and I thought, I've got to change this. I've got to take control of my look um, and feel empowered again. And I found that I didn't have to be completely sighted to love the beauty industry and, and everything it entails you know it's quite overwhelming going into boots with not really any tactile packaging and I thought right I've got to make this my own and my sister is fully sighted she's my best friend and she basically taught me everything at the start I'd go into her room and I'd say Alice have I got good foundation on and she'd be like Luce I'm really sorry I'm your mirror now I'm your eyes um it, there's a line there and, and I was just so I'd go out crying different. Yeah, and this is something I'd go out crying and I'd be like, oh, at least I just I don't know what to do. You know, there was a year there, Chloe, where I just, I felt really sad about it, you know. Um, but then it became a massive hobby because, I don't know about you, Chloe, but being blind really makes you, like, delve deep into a lot of um, things. I always say that you can't really do things half measure when you're blind. You have I to definitely It's yeah. not the same, but, like, since losing my sight, I've got more into photography. Yes. Yeah. Allows me to see things I can no longer see um, yeah. with my remaining sight. And no, it is really weird kind of what it teaches you. Yeah. I sort of became a bit more extreme. I don't know. I extreme, yeah, is the word with it. And I just, I just love makeup in a different way. It's not a visual thing for me. Obviously, it makes me feel good. And it's great that I can do it so, you know, visually, I don't have to look in a mirror. It, it's sort of taken that, you know, need away. It went, it was so, so important for me to have a mirror in the start. And then now I feel like I accept myself as blind Lucy more. It's ever so weird. But that's how I can sort of explain it. Yeah. yeah I get it. It's certainly yeah. a transition, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So, 
was really excited to do my my look today yeah i'm excited so what look are you going to give us today right so this is a very simple and glowy look this is something that i wanted to target at doing a like to the, to the basics really if i was uh little well little lucy seven years ago and i had someone sitting in front of me and i was so overwhelmed back then you know what are the basics what can i do to look have a like a no makeup makeup look um and i thought I'd, I'd do that so there's like um a lot of highlighter and there's like not quite full coverage it's more like cc cream so we're looking at something that's a bit more moisturizing for your skin so maybe you can go to work in i mean we're all on zoom calls at the mo aren't we queens so you know it's just to make that just to make us feel really glowy and light <laughs> sounds like a good idea to me yeah. <laughs> it sounds really cool so shall i get started chloe or is there any other questions no no you you get yeah. started um if so we're just, I, yeah we're just gonna spotlight you so i'll turn my video off and you're good okay, to go darling. fabulous so I look glowy at the moment, I'm sure it's very good. It's quite, the weather today was quite thundery. It wanted to thunder, so it's a bit humid. Um, I, put, I make sure before I start any look whatsoever, you've got to have your skincare down, Queens. I, I will harp on about this until the day I die, which sounds morbid, but I'm so passionate about if you have a good skincare routine, your makeup, as someone who cannot see, will go on so much better. And I can't even say, so makeup days, I, when I don't do skincare or have moisturizer on, there's, there's no linking point sometimes. I just think, oh, you know, I don't have my base. Let that moisturizer sink into your skin at, le at, at least for 15 minutes. Just brush your teeth, have it on, um, wash your face, just make sure you have that routine in the morning because I guarantee it will help you. Also, SPF is so important. Um, if you want any more tips on skincare, as it's not my complete forte, I would say go on Caroline Hirons. She is a really great YouTuber, um, and that's how I sort of, I binged her videos a bit. But I, I am a bit of a skincare junkie as well, but I'm just gonna do it my hair with this clip. We've got to be prepared when we're doing a makeup session to just get that hair out of those eyes. We don't need anything. When we don't have working eyes, queens, we need to just get everything out of the situation and it will all be okay. Um, I've got a bit of lip balm on, but I'm gonna go, just gonna do this. Just making sure we've got everything dewy and glowy. We've got, right, I've got all my makeup in front of me. And what I love to do is have a makeup bag with compartments. You can get those rolls uh, from Boots compartmentalize the situation you don't need it to be complicated at all you can have your face in one uh, part of the of the makeup bag you can have your eyes your skincare just make sure you have all of those braille labels all of those tactile markers maybe even elastic bands hair bubbles anything you can do to make your life easier and also what i would say is that i harp on a lot about in my book the the blind beauty guide I always say that it's really important to get products that are very tactile. So for instance, this palette, the Lolita palette by Kat Von D, that front is so tactile for a blind girl. I know instantly that is my Lolita palette um, and I've learned all of the colours in it. Anyway, cut a long story short, have a lot of tactile packaging. Another thing that's really great is benefits products. So I'm thinking a mascara like this. Look at the lid of that. And if just to audio describe, the lid is ribbed and it's just you can feel all of the bumps on the lid. I know instantly as a blind girl that is really cool packaging and that's my you know benefit mascara. So stuff to think about, food for thought. So this is the products that I love to use. I've really honed in what I like over the years and what I would also say, being a blind girl, really important. Know your product, go through someone in the store. When you go to Boots, if you don't have anyone to go with you, go to the ladies at the Boots counters, show them your wrist and say, hey queens, I wanna get some foundation matched. This is, my, this is gonna be my color, which is in, the, um, in your wrist. You show them your wrist, 
and they will that will match all the corner of your or the corner of your jaw that's how you match your your foundation and you can get a real good gist of it and and the smell and the texture will all go in anyway i'm going to stop babbling i'm going to start applying so first of all i've got some concealer i, I know what you're saying people i know what you're easily thinking people apply their foundation first not this queen um if you are going to apply concealer under your eyes like i'm doing do it in a v shape and you don't need loads. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, absolute favourite. Um, but also, you can get collection lasting perfection. That is also a really good one. So I've put two Bs underneath my eyes right now. Um, because this is two tones lighter, typically this concealer from the rest of my skin tone, I like to do it underneath my foundation because it doesn't mean um, that I'm trying to match my foundation at the same time. I'm just knowing that I've got glowy eyes. And what I'm doing right now is I've got a towel on my lap. I've got a beauty blender, which is basically a sponge that absorbs water. You have to, I've had this in water on, on the table in a cup, but you, usually you go and run this underneath your tap, squeeze out as much as you can. So this should be wet, but not like dripping. Like obviously you don't want all the drips to go on your face. But now I'm just going to bounce this on my face, like so. so I'm just bouncing it underneath my eyes. Um, and this is a, a beauty blender. Uh, well, you can get a beauty blender, but this is like a, like a beauty blender is like 20 quid, but there's a, there's a rip-off beauty blender, which is this. It's a Miracle Complexion Sponge by Real Techniques. And um, yeah, I'm just dabbing that all over. Don't need to be perfect. Just underneath those eyeballs. Um, and also, if you've got really sensitive eyes, you can get really, really mini beauty blenders. At the moment, I am really quite patting my under eyes, but it's because I'm so used to it. You can probably hear my guide dog in the background, bless her. She's got a collar. Hi, Olga, you all right, sweetie pie? She's probably going to knock over all me makeup. I'm just going to be like, Mom, what are you doing? Right. Okay, so we've got that underneath. Now, I have a NYX CC cream. I think it's called Bear With Me. Really love this, just for those casual days where you just want to chuck on something on your face, but you don't want loads and loads of coverage. I would recommend a CC cream, BB cream type affair before you get started with anything else and go light on it because often these things um you know you don't need a lot of product so i'm just going to apply that straight onto my face a few blobs which is coming out soon hang on let me just put the beauty blender down <laughs> right let me just do this there's a lot of air in this product there we go right so i've got i've just dabbed two um little blobs on the sides of my cheeks i'm gonna do a few dabs on my forehead i'm just i'm just doing this with my fingers for now guys um as we get started i'll probably look quite weird at the moment but we're just dabbing all over my face um not a lot just enough so now i'm going in my beauty blender i know i can i can check with my my hands first and then i know that the product is evenly distributing on my face I feel like I need a bit more actually. So let's go with a bit more, just a tiny bit more. And this is really important to know the, the depth perception gets there. It really does. Um, I struggled at the beginning to know exactly, um, you know, when all of my foundation was rubbed in. But what I would say is the beauty blender is just life. Well, Miracle Convection Springs, whatever sponge you're using, it is just life. I was using like, brushes and everything and to start off as a blind girl with brushes and and you know if you're going out to work and you're not necessarily seeing someone sighted until you know you get to work or whatever or, or a friend or you know you facetime someone they can't necessarily see on the camera all those brush strokes so to be confident and be you know a blind girl queen at doing makeup you really do need to invest in a sponge and what you will realize these are only like four quid um, but what you will realize with me is that this is called like one of my longest steps because I just want to know that every single part of my face is is definitely rubbed in um, and I will target those areas I will sort of make quadrants in my head of, of what I've covered and felt like I've covered so I have my forehead as, as one and I just make sure I do my temples really, really evenly. I know that the sponge is doing its job. It's doing its work. Um, and we're getting places. I, I do also really rely on my product because if I was to do a really um, different foundation right now, 
I wouldn't rely on that as much as this CC cream because I know I've, I know how it works. I've you know been using it for a good six months. I know, I, and I can trust it. Whereas if you were to just use a foundation, you wouldn't know whether it would, would oxidize or it would move differently. And as a blind girl, you know you really rely on it. And oxidization, just just a side note, is something that occurs if you go outside in your foundation after you've applied it. Once it hits the air, it can actually go orange. So you think that you know, it might have matched you in the store or whatever, but it might just be that those the, the a chemical reactions happening on your face and it, it might go a bit orange. So it's trial and error, you know, you won't get it um, perfect straight away. But what I would say, it's, it's just a really good shout to do a BB slash CC cream. So yeah, I'm still going guys, I'm still buffing. You know, this is really important to keep going with it. So. I'm just going to keep going, just make sure I've got every single last bit of my face, making sure. And if you guys wanted to conceal any other parts of your face, because I know that I have a few blemishes today and whatever, you know, as queens get them. Uh, in stressful times like the pandemics, you know, <laughs> that we're going through, um, you might get a few breakouts, but you know, easily solved with a bit of concealer underneath your foundation slash CC cream. So I just, I'm a bit of a NYX junkie, NYX, if you guys don't know about them. They're brilliant. I think they're mid-range. They're not like the cheapest you can get, but they're just amazing at boots. Really great. So I think I'm okay and done with that. So, right. Now, you can probably say, Lucy, how do you know you've done? I, I have definitely gone over and over and over several different bits of my face there and I know that that would have worked the way I wanted it to. There may be a few streaks at some points but I think it's all I think it's all good and, and you just got to trust in yourself there. I think it, it confidence if you're confident with your product it sort of can hear you. That's how I feel. I'll probably sound like a complete weirdo right now. Right anyway moving on. Powder to set your foundation. If you are and um, maybe oily, you get oily throughout the day, T-zone or whatever, you might want to set your, set your powder. I have a really tiny brush, it's really tiny right now, I'm holding it up to the camera. This brush is a lifesaver for my under eyes. Um, I, I don't want my stuff to crease underneath my eyes. But also, being a blind girl, it's really, really important to be careful with this under eye area. Um, I get a lot of eye pain, chronic pain recently. Um, and it's just it's just nice to have a smaller brush to just set that part of your face a bit more. You don't need lots and lots. It, it's completely up to you. And um, this is the Too Faced Born This Way powder. Um, it's got a, it's got some coverage, so I I do like coverage in my powder. If I'm doing a bit of a lighter CC cream, I do like coverage in my powder. So uh, and then I'm going to do my nose. I call these the nose balls, the inner bits of your nose, just above your nostrils. <laughs> A bit weird, but there we go. I'm a weird type of gal sometimes. Like my, and then maybe if you want to, you can. I, it depends what you want to do here. I sometimes go in with a brush, sometimes go in with my beauty blender. Today, um, I know that this powder is a little bit darker than my skin, um, so I, I tend to go in with a brush. It tends to be a bit more of a oh, wispy type of look. So I just I wisp the brush there, and you tap on the side. This brush is just a, um, from the Real Techniques collection. I absolutely love Real Techniques. Those are the um, powder brushes and all sorts and um, brushes I tend to use from them. Um, they're very good. So I'm just patting that all over the face, cheeks, on my chin, above my lips, on my nose, just all really nice. You can go with a seep, like a translucent powder here if you want to, if you don't want as much coverage. But what I would say about powder as a blind girl, it, it's um, I just find at um, the early stages of my blind girl makeup journey, I was really finding powder quite comforting because I it would stay where it, it you know it said it does what it does on the tear and you can really actually I can feel that setting my face right now. It's really quite a um, tactile experience when you when you put on your powder set, setting it, especially in these um, quite humid conditions right now. I can feel myself being a bit humid. Makeup clears work right lovely so that is set i'm happy with my progress so far that is my base we're, we're working it we're working it so i'm just going to put my beauty blender back don't need her anymore right so 
we're feeling good we've got a base um if you have any questions whatsoever leave them in the comments because i'm sure chloe will ask me about it later um so right next i'm on it don't worry yeah you're on it <laughs> we've got so a few funny. questions but we'll wait until the end okay cool right next is my eyebrows you think oh my gosh terrifying eyebrows what the hell you're blind this was one of the last things to come to me so please 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 keep going with it it's about knowing um depth perception i don't have any depth perception anymore because i can't see i can't see my hand come into my face but i know so many eyes practice touching my face and i know that sounds really weird but you know going higher and just knowing the bits of your face a lot more it's about learning your face again so i've got this nyx again nyx is a theme micro brow pencil it is tiny it's got two ends on it a really tiny end to draw your brows and another spooly end to brush your brows in um this is like soft brown i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna blind girl do it so i've just i'm uh rolling that up and it's i'm just feeling that there's a point to it just making sure that i've got it and what i do so how do i describe this so what i do is i take my left hand i'm using i'm drawing my right hand i'm doing my right brow i'm a bit more sparse on my right brow uh, me and my mom always have a bit if people think we've plucked our eyebrows a bit weird but honestly uh, i just have a bit of a sparse brow there so i put my um finger from my left hand on my brow so where i'm going to start it and I start drawing with my right hand and this is just practice guys it really is so I'm just gonna go a tiny bit silent while a blind girl draw my brows on never drawn my brows on to zoom call before so this is a bit more scary than usual I'm just drawing every individual hair I've never drawn my eyebrows at all so you're doing better than me oh <laughs> thank you moral support i love it so that's one i might go back depends on how i feel depends how the mood takes me right i'm drawing the other one on i'm feeling i'm feeling and it's literally just following that brow guys and and knowing and doing it enough times sometimes i get it wrong everyone will get it wrong when they can't look in a mirror a little bit but it's about feeling confident enough to do it the strokes and 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 you know i've done this for six years now with this exact pen like i'm not ever going to change pen i love this pen um it's absolutely blinking brilliant so right i need to just do a bit more on here i felt that i'm a bit wayward with that so really what to tell you with that is um don't draw your brows on if you really don't feel confident because i would say it's not the main thing about about makeup but what i would say is that it really has made me feel like i can do blind girl makeup because of brows um and it's about finding the right projects like i was drawing my brows on and i looked sad half the time <laughs> and i was like oh my god i could never do this but it, it's about trial and error with this this guy's what, uh, what can i say you know th this nyx product is really good and it might be that you just want a bit of brow mascara to start off with or it might be that you don't want to do brows at all and that is okay um but it's it's just about i'm spooling it through right now if you guys can't see the camera i'm spooling um my eyebrows all through just so all of my hairs mix with um the product i've just applied and it might be that you want um, a bit of a brow. Um, sorry, you can tell that I'm concentrating. I'm not as bubbly right now. Uh, it might be that you want like a brow um, box, which you can have, uh, which is a different alternative. I think something just flew off then. I've not got that. Anyway, um, you, it might be that you want a brow box. So you can get brow powder. And it, it just depends how you feel about them. And we can just chat about that in the comments I would, i'd love to take if you have any questions about brows right now please leave them in the comments what i do instantly after i've done my brows because it probably looks a bit stark like i've done the rest of my makeup and then my brows are like woo um i get my powder brush and i just powder over my brows like that it just makes them look like they're meant to be on your head <laughs> that's all i can say you know um 
yeah so that's that's browse it yeah as i said so just just keep keep the comments come in um it's about finding your project there and it's about feeling your face and your depth perception and it's about drawing on really slowly being confident with your strokes and um knowing your brows right up next we've got uh my blusher so i'm gonna get a nice powder brush real techniques do actual sets you know um and powder brushes and all sorts of brushes are so tactile i've actually got a, a brush um little case here it's kind of made for brushes and i've got loads of different ones and i can just it's really actually quite entertaining because this is one bit of the makeup bag is probably a bit more messier than the other i just literally put all my brushes in because i can feel them all and that part is just so entertaining i love it right so this is sort of this brush is um a, a blush brush i think that's what they call it on real techniques they're actually really Really good at labeling the brushes so i would would if you recommend getting uh, like an expert face brush or you know not foundation we love beauty blenders as blind girls but yeah blush it for brusher blusher blusher oh right now i'm gonna this is my milani blush it's kind of like um i think it's like a peachy blush i can't quite remember but it was just nice i've had it for ages it's kind of worn but i love milani blushes what you can also do is go to max factor they have gorgeous blushes as well as sleek beautiful so i'm just going to swirl my brush around tap as always if you feel like you've got too much product use your hands use the towel that's on your lap and then it's the apples of your cheeks guys so we're just doing the apples of the cheeks um and it's just about feeling natural and glowy um what also is a really really good blusher is uh, nars they have a bit um cheeky names it's called nars orgasm but it's just a glittery blusher it's so beautiful it was it was massively hyped about on youtube about five years ago and i've just never stopped typing about it to be honest so i'll put that blusher on now i don't know if i put way too much on and quite frankly we're going to do this tip again but we're going to get our powder brush this is our friend of the blind girl if you want you can even dip back into your powder that's why i have a bit of a um a, like a, a, a pigmented that's the word i want to say pigmented powder um so then i can just know that i'm just going to go over and it's called veiling so this is what we want to do just make sure just feel confident as we can to just push that product into your cheeks voila so i know that that is rubbed in now i know that i don't have too much blusher on my face because i've gone over with my powder brushes it's all these little techniques guys makes you feel really confident um right next this is a palette this looks really daunting and probably really messy if my sister could see this right now she would be like loose blow off your powder because you dip too harsh into your product and the powder is all over the um the the palette and i'll be like l'oreal but anyway if you are new to eyeshadow i wanted to do a really really simple thing today and it's just using your fingers no brushes no nothing we're so new to this that it's you know we're not going to go complicated today we're going to go glowy right i've got a powder that's shimmery I can't quite remember the name of it, but you can check back on the list of products that I mentioned before signing up to this video um, on that. But basically, it's two tones lighter than my skin tone. So that, and what I'm basically doing is dipping it in with my finger, just swirling twice with my finger, tapping. Make sure you don't have too much product. Tap with your finger, tap, tap your finger off if you like, and go in just on your lid. You just want to do it on your exact lid. So on your lid shape you don't want to go above your brow or near your brow really because we're wanting it to stay on the lid we want it to be shimmery and gorgeous and that is just simply passing it on with the finger i think it's really you know it's really really good to do and if you want extra eyeshadow tutorials in the future i would be happy to do so um, I've got a lot of information about eyeshadow and everything in my book. Also, just doing this as a blind girl, if your foundation has creased or anything, we're just covering that up as well. It's just an extra little um, thing that I know. If I do that two tones lighter, um, it's really good. So I'm just tapping that on right now. It's literally just one colour. If you wanted to do extra, um, I could talk all day about different colours and how to label your eyeshadow palettes. And all that good stuff if you ask me in the comments i can go more in some more detail but this is just about the basics great eyeshadows i would say cat one d is a great one um as i'm using now i love this lolita palette it's gorgeous um 
what else would I say? I love Makeup Geek, which is um, sort of an indie makeup brand in the States. She's great. She, you can really like do bespoke um, palettes for her. She's absolutely brilliant. Uh, what else would I say? I love NYX. I mean, you know, there's a theme. <laughs> I love NYX eyeshadows. And you can also, I think you can do palettes there as well. So yeah, right. I'm just going to make sure that that is all rubbed in. I don't want any harsh lines. So I'm doing it with my other finger. If you feel like you've got too much powder on one finger, I'm, I'm tend to be swapping a little bit. Right. Make sure that that's all rubbed in. Right, righty ho. On to the next step. Right, okay, if you are new to mascara, and please, I totally get you, I feel you. Mascara as a blind woman, eyeliner as a blind woman, is hard but if you are starting from the very 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 basics i would recommend either a brow gel sounds weird but it's kind of it's kind of good it's like your natural eyeshadow color um eyebrow color and your natural uh, lashes color this is what i've got in my hands today my max factor or you want like a clear mascara so if you like i don't know close your eyelids in the middle of your tutorial or um, before you go out to work, you don't want to be, um, you know, trying to fix it and feeling really bad about fixing it. Eventually, uh, you do get into a rhythm with it. If you, if you do a few applications maybe with mascaras, I would recommend getting a travel size one. And there's mascaras that actually dry. And when they're dry after 10 minutes, you can actually scrape it with your finger, uh, which is really empowering. I love to do I can actually feel it on the top of, my, of, of, top of my lashes. But if you really don't know where to go with your lashes to start off with, I really would recommend like a brow gel like this. It's a tiny, tiny, I'm showing it to the camera right now. It is tiny this little brush is, the tinier the better. Um, and it really is about, see, I can't see this brush coming to me. I'm gonna put it to my face right now. I'm gonna blink onto it. That's what you wanna do. Start off with, shake your head, get all the application on those lashes. Whew, doing it in this. I've got a big ring light, guys, and it is very hot. I'm just blinking onto that. Blink, blink, blinkity blink, blind girl blink. Right, and then I'm just moving my head. Luscious lashes in an instant. You know, it's just about coating them, making sure that we feel good about our lashes. This comes on all day. And also what I would recommend, if you're someone like me sometimes, like on my bad blind girl days, I love just putting this on. If my eyes are really, really, I'm just doing my right eye now, by the way. Uh, just blinking onto that. Yep, lovely. If I'm having a really bad blind girl day and my eyes are really hurting, um, which is most days recently, to be honest, um, having a lot of eye drops and eye pain. But um, if your eyes are really hurting, if you do rub your eyes and forget that you've got anything on your eyes, oh, I just poked my eye out then. This is this is the good thing about being a blind girl as well. How many times have I slightly got my mascara? This is the thing. Mascara can be a bit of a risky business if you've got quite sensitive eyes, but what I would say is don't be afraid to fail. If you want, get that other hand on your, le on your left side. Just make sure you're blinking onto it and you can be as slow as you like. I'm in a bit blase because I've done it so many times. And I'm like, oh, I'll poke my eye out so many times. Let's just do this. But yeah, it's about being confident with it. And it's, you know, this journey is a journey for a reason. You can be as slow or as quick as you like. Right. So that's that, my lashes are covered. They probably aren't that dramatic and my eyes probably aren't that dramatic, but let's go, go with the flow really. I'm gonna do a bit of inner, uh, oh, sorry, I've just lost my, my brown closet, let's just put that up on the table. Um, I'm gonna do a bit of inner uh, waterline concealer, um, not concealer, what am I on? Um, a bit of eyeliner that is actually white. And I know you're probably like, oh, why are you doing white eyeliner? But it just makes you feel bright and breezy. This is NYX as well, it's white eyeliner. I've given, um, on, on my list that I've provided with this session, all of the products that I'm using are there. So just um, check that out. But what I'm gonna do right now is just pull my la lash down and have a water. Again, this is practice, going slow. I've done it so many times. Going with a, um, a white eyeliner is really good to start with because you're not gonna get any smudging. Black is quite dramatic to start with. I'm just pulling down the line. And it's just about 
feeling I'm going to do my right eye now. It's really quite quick. And also, yeah, sorry guys. You know, when you can concentrate, you're doing something. I'm just drawing on my line now. Right, there we go. So, whew, that can make your eyes water. This is the thing. This is why I wanted to do a really basic, simple eye tutorial for you guys today. Because if your eyes are sensitive, drawing in your waterline and doing your mascara, quite hard to do. But those are the simplest ways that I could find to start you off to make you feel more confident with it. With a white eyeliner, you can't go much wrong um, to start with. Um, what I would really do is really try and do it on your waterline because it's about feeling quite um, like it's not going to go on your bottom lash line because you, you can um, make it seem a bit, I don't know, you could just feel a bit more, I don't know, make you look a bit like a ghost maybe if you do it too far outward. So do skip that step if you're not comfortable with drawing on your waterline. Um, that's what I would say. Right, I'm just trying to find my highlighter brush. Right, my highlighter brush. This brush, really pointed, because highlighting is about doing where the light hits you, not that us blind girls can see it, but we can, we can pretend where the light hits you when you're just like boom, 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 you know, looking like a... Uh, a model uh, with your highlighter and your, and your and your makeup on. Sorry, I'm just feeling for the highlighter. Um, you want to do the high points in your face. So you want to do your um, your nose bridge. You want to do your cupid's bow, which is just above your lips, that little dip on your lips. You want to do your chin, and you want to do the high points just above where you put your uh, blusher. So just above sort of the apple of your cheeks, just below um, your eyes. So let's see. So I've got this highlighter and I'm just going to swirl my brush again, tiny bit. When you've got such pigmented highlighters like this, you don't want to be dipping in loads and loads and you just want to be swiping it a little bit just so we can get that effect. And I am going to go in with my powder brush, the trusty powder brush to make sure it's not too much at the end. I'm not going to dip in again with this highlighter because I know that it's really, really glowy. Again, that's on my list. Um, there's all such a great highlighters out there. Blinking lovely, like Makeup Revolution do so many lovely ones. Right, I'm going to go again with my powder brush. We're veiling, we're veiling, queens, we're veiling. Making sure that that's all going into the skin. Lovely, jubbly. And let's finish with some setting spray because it's just beautiful. I've also got loads and loads of tips and tricks on my blind beauty guide out now on amazon kindle and i go into so much more depth and detail but that is me that is uh how i do a really simple look i'm just fanning myself right now and uh i'm just gonna take my hair down because you know i've got to look like queens maybe i don't know hair isn't my special thing i just like some diet and maybe a back comb maybe some dry shampoo and uh some perfume and out the door we go i'm just still fanning myself <laughs> uh, thank you very much Lucy that was like I really enjoyed that I don't know about everyone else um you just make it look so easy <laughs> oh no honestly thanks honestly hours and hours and hours of doing um, it Thank you so much for watching this video today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my first makeup tutorial in a while. I really enjoyed doing it. And obviously it's Zoom quality cool. So if you want me to do a proper dedicated video on my channel or any more live streams about makeup, I want to hear about it in those comments down below. Also, you probably noticed I didn't quite apply my lipstick in the end of that clip. I did when I was answering the questions, but I think I was getting carried away with explaining my look. Um, but I just usually use a lip gloss when I'm doing that sort of thing. So it has to be tinted because um, us blind girls don't know if we've got foundation lips and it just sort of hides it. Today, I've actually got a Barry M uh, stain on my lips, which is also really good. Anyway, babbling. Really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next week for a new one. Bye guys.